Welcome into K-State Online. I'm Mason Voth. That is Drew Galloway, and we are here with another commitment for the Wildcats. K-State adding to their class of 2025 with another player that visited over the weekend. And this continues a trend that kind of started going back to the last recruiting cycle that K-State had where some of the 2024 receivers that they landed had four-star status from some of the different sites. Same type of deal going on here for Adonis Moyes the wide receiver from IMG Academy who commits to K-State. Four stars on ESPN, had offers from K-State, obviously, but KU, Indiana, UCF, West Virginia, Boston College, Pitt, and uh, some others along the way there. And now the Wildcats have another Florida receiver that will be coming into their program. Uh, what what went down in this recruitment here in K-State? To me, when we whenever we talk, Drew, you seem to think they were the leader for a long, long time. So, uh, give us an idea of what this recruitment looked like and what it means. Yeah, it was kind of just an open and shut recruitment, honestly, for the most part with K State and Adonis Moyes. When Moyes visited for a spring practice in March, K State offered him, and from kind of that moment forward, I kind of got the feeling that K-State was in the lead and talking to Adonis Moyes kind of in that springtime and kind of leading up to the official visit. I kind of got the sense that K-State was so far in the lead and he kind of talked about how really the one thing that he was really looking forward to the most about his official visit was, is K-State a place that he can call home and that he was hoping to be able to commit on the visit? And I mean, we kind of talked about it last week on a recruiting show when we said that he moved up his official visit from June 21st to June 7th through the 9th over the weekend uh, because he wanted to kind of beat the other receivers to the punch and wanted to be in the K-State class that bad that he ends up moving it up. And, and I think that this was really just good work by Matthew Middleton and the rest of the K-State staff because as pretty much as soon as he was offered, it seemed like it was kind of in the bag for K-State to the point where all three of us ended up putting in a, an RPM prediction for Moyes to K-State. And I just, like, oftentimes I can kind of point out, like, another school that, okay, they they probably ran second for him. There wasn't really a, a second place for Adonis Moyes. Like, it, he had no other official visits scheduled, wanted to be at K-State really badly. And kind of just went from there on his official visit where I believe he actually ended up committing uh, before leaving Manhattan. And then it gets announced later on. So I think that that's kind of just really where his recruitment went because there was no real other like school that really stood out for him. No, oh, yeah, you're on mute. In terms of what kind of style of uh, recruit that he is and, and receiver that K State is getting here, where would you throw that? Like, do you have any good comps for people that are curious about the latest Wildcat? That that's a little tougher. I think that stylistically, I think that you're kind of seeing Matthew Middleton develop a type at receiver. And we kind of saw that with Trey Davis and uh, Jaquise Bradley Demps from the last class where he just really wants guys that can catch the ball and be really explosive once they get the ball in their hands. And Moise fits that bill. He has kind of played all over the field. He plays a little bit in the slot, plays a little bit on the outside. He's been motioned in the backfield a few times and gotten handoffs like they're there are a lot of different ways to use it on his Moyes because he has really good speed as well. I believe he runs a 4.37 40 yard dash is what is in his uh, Twitter bio or four point four point four three. So he, he is plenty, plenty fast and can really, really scoot. So I think that with him, the, the whole challenge will be okay, get him the ball somehow and let him go to work. But I, I think they are seeing Middleton get a type, so I'm not surprised that this is kind of a, a player that he would covet. Well, and you, you kind of look in at, at what this ends up looking like. I mean, size-wise, same height as Jace Brown, uh, 10 pounds heavier than Jace Brown was as a recruit. Uh, I mean, this and also a Florida receiver. We've seen K-State really – Chris Kleiman has kind of reinvigorated over the you know five years that he's been here now. We've seen 
K-State go to Florida more often than what they had towards the end of Bill Snyder's career. But now we're starting to see that kind of pick up uh, a little bit more. And obviously you're not going to be hurt when you get skill position guys from the state of Florida. And that's kind of where Adonis Moyes seems to fit in to this process. So he is a receiver. There is obviously good upside there, getting the four-star status from at least one of the recruiting sites. He doesn't have all of his uh, metrics busted out yet. But in terms of how he fits into the grand scheme of this class, we know K-State already has the quarterback. They've got an offensive lineman. Now you add a receiver on the offensive side of the ball. What else is kind of going to work in that area? How does Adonis Moyes fit into the picture? So I think that you're kind of seeing – uh, an offensive class kind of come together and it, it, it obviously helps when you have your quarterback already in tow and having him be there with Adonis Moyes it obviously didn't hurt so kind of being able to see the future there with Dylan Duff and Adonis Moyes uh, but big picture I can see K-State probably going for probably one more receiver so again like just like we talked about with uh, the Martel Jackson commitment this is one where you kind of felt good about where K-State was beforehand. So like, you know, you know, now that you have one receiver already already. Now you probably just need one more, maybe two. So it's, it's another one where this kind of puts pressure on guys like Jalen Cooper, guys like Gio Richardson, guys like um, just guys like that, where they're going to be taking official visits to K-State relatively soon. So it's, okay, now they already have one player in. What do I What do I do next? Like, what's my next move? Do I need to be able to commit or do I need to commit sooner? Which is good because, again, like I said, like we're kind of on the brink of, I think, K-State really exploding and getting two of, or getting two of the guys that took official visits already, I think kind of just proves that we were right in the sense that K-State is really just right there for a lot of different players. Yeah, certainly right there, kind of on the cusp of, of trying to land some guys, and Adonis Moyes fits into it. Uh, anything else that you think people should be aware of in terms of Moyes and what he brings to the table or uh, how he's kind of communicated what K-State already means to him? Uh, he's a fun player to watch his film because he's used in so many different ways, and he is explosive with the ball but also can go up and make the contested catch, which is really fun. Uh, another fun thing for me, at least, is I, I kind of like knowing who the host of the official visit is for some of these players that come in. And with Moyes having it be Joe Jackson, another Florida kid, I think was just a really smart decision. And those who really hit it off and kind of talked about and, and Jackson is somebody that's kind of gone through this of, OK, I'm from Florida, too. Like, this is kind of what I have learned about Kasich from being here in my year so far and during the recruitment process. Because remember, Joe Jackson was another one that kind of like Adonis Moyes, that Jackson was originally scheduled to take an official visit to K-State during the fall. But because of kind of how the running back numbers worked out in the 2023 class, Jackson moved his official visit way up and ended up committing to K-State because of that. So I think that he kind of learned a little uh, he, that he learned a lot from Jackson in that process and just learned a lot more about K-State because remember some of these kids like Adonis Moyes, this was only his second time in Manhattan. So kind of getting to see everything again, I think is a good refresher. And I'm really interested to see if Moyes is somebody that will come back for a game or two during the fall as well, because he hasn't seen K-State during the fall. Yeah, that's, uh, that's a good point, and it, it does seem like a, a wise move on K-State's part to pairing with one of the Florida guys on the roster. And I think, you know, this this doesn't necessarily tie into Moyes, but it it's kind of adjacent to him. Uh, the fact that Joe Jackson was his host and, you know, essentially able to, to help in this process and, uh, you know, explain to Moyes kind of what it was like here, I think should give – K-State fans confidence uh, and and good thoughts about where Joe Jackson sits right now that, you know, after a year where obviously he didn't get to see the field, field a ton, but he feels good and he's still confident in what K-State's doing. So not necessarily something about Moyes to close things out here, but also still just a vote of confidence about what K-State's program looks like as a whole in terms of health and how happy 
players are because that's such a big part of it. And you have a guy like that locked in uh, and certainly did not hurt the the process of trying to land a four star wide out this weekend. Yeah, I think that how K State kind of goes about their process of who is hosting, who has been really excellent, really in Chris Clemens' entire tenure. But the last few classes, it just feels like it's been nails. I mean, like last year, Caden Massey, his host was Avery Johnson. So kind of just seeing how that's all kind of tied together. And if you can get somebody, especially like uh, from Florida to host Adonis Boys, like they did with Joe Jackson, was an excellent choice. Yeah, no doubt about it. All right, well, there you have it. That is uh, the latest commit in K-State's class of 2025. So now they're starting to roll in. We've had two over the past couple of days. Drew was telling everybody, hey, they're going to be coming. We're going to get hot and heavy in June. Uh, That certainly happened as the Wildcats have the fifth member of their class now and a good pickup out of the state of Florida. So that will do it for Drew and I. If you want more on the Moyes commitment, head over to kstateonline.com, add on three or keep following along right here on the KSO YouTube page because anytime the Cats get a commit, Drew and I will be here to give you the breakdown and some insight as to what went down there, uh, as well as plenty of other things going on for K-State because I'm sure tomorrow everybody will want an update uh, on other things going on, basketball, football, you name it, we'll have it for you uh, and everything else that you need. So that'll do it for Drew Galloway. I'm Mason Vo. Thanks for watching K-State Online, and we'll see you again tomorrow.